Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Capture One released a new version of their flagship software, Capture One 22. In today's video, we're going to talk about what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Capture One. Outside of bug fixes and new camera and lens support, there really are four new features in this version of Capture One. One of those new features I can't demo. Uh, it now has some capability to tether with Canon cameras wirelessly. I say some capability because it doesn't work with all Canon cameras. I believe the R3 and the R5 are a couple of the cameras, so some of the newer cameras. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to Capture One's website, and you could see for yourself exactly which cameras uh, wireless tethering is supported in Capture One 22. Can't demo that because I'm not a Canon shooter. The second new feature I'm just going to mention, uh, they have a new feature where it will automatically straighten or align an image. Now they had that in the past, that is over here in the rotation and flip tool. It's this little kind of magic wand. And when you click that, it would automatically straighten your image. Well, now it will do it to more than one image. So you could select all the images that are crooked in the film strip and then click on that little magic wand tool and it will do each image individually. So it won't copy the settings from one to the others. It will look at each image and straighten them out as they need to be. Now, the next two features I'm actually going to demonstrate. They now have uh, the ability to create an HDR image and a panorama image. Let's start with the panorama. I have a number of RAW files here. Uh, they're Sony RAW files. They're actually really very large. They're from a Sony a7R4. Um, this, you can see they're underexposed. I was exposing for the sky, so I didn't process them at all. So I have this one, and I have this one. You can see I was panning to the right as I was taking these shots. They're all handheld. So I want to create a panorama with these, uh, how many do I have there? Five images. So I'm gonna click on that first one, hold the shift key down and click on the last one so that they're all selected in the film strip. And you can see they all show up here in the middle. Then I'm going to go up to image and then I'm going to go down to stitch to panorama. And when you do that, you'll get this uh, dialog box and you have four different projections to choose from. And um, I didn't really plan very well. I chose the largest RAW files I had, so it takes a little while. Of course, the size of your RAW file will um, kind of dictate how long it takes for these different projections to actually render so you could look at them. This is the spherical projection, you could see. And what you'll do, you just click through these, let it generate its preview, and see if one of them um, is favorable over the others. So example, cylindrical here compared to spherical. Cylindrical seems to give me a little more sky. Uh, perspective, I could let that uh, generate and it's saying that it's just too large. And what I could do then is go down to stitch size and go to the scale and get a smaller scale. And then you could see that now it renders very quickly. Of course, that one is no good. Uh, Panini, um, might not work, it depends. Sometimes some of these will not work with the images you're using or they'll just sit there and say generating preview for a very, 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 very long time. And I'm not going to wait for it. So let's just assume that Panini isn't any good. I seem to like cylindrical a little better because it seemed to give me more sky compared to spherical. So I like that one. Now the stitch size, um, a 25% um, scale will give me a seven megapixel image. I could go, and it's 4217 by 1742. So I could go a little bigger than that. I mean, you could go all the way to 100% if you want. It's gonna give you a 6,871 by 6968 pixel image, at least as far as these images were concerned. Of course, whatever images you use, these sizes will be different. Um, let's just, for the sake of this 
uh, demonstration go with a 65 megapixel um, image with the cylindrical projection and we'll click stitch and it will create this um, stitched panorama you can see it it's pretty quick these are large files they're um, from a, as I mentioned a Sony a7r4 that's a, like a 60 megapixel camera whatever it is so you have the image now whoops right here and what do you do with it well the first thing you really got to do is you got to crop it so we'll get the crop tool and I'll just come in here and pull in that edge and pull up this corner edge over here and I just want to try to get rid of all those blank pixels around the outside and I think that is pretty good now I could process it as I normally would I could go over here and as I mentioned I didn't process this at all um, one thing I want to mention, um, you may find sometimes when you do a panorama, because you had some lens vignetting, if you didn't do any processing at all, like I just didn't do any processing at all, and you stitch it to a panorama, you'll get these dark bands going through the image because you had that lens vignetting. So what you may have to do is do some lens corrections to those raw files before you stitch them into a panorama. That way you won't have those dark bands uh, going through the image. So something to keep in mind. Um, just going to do just a quick process here. So it just looks better because I feel like it looks horrible. All right. Something, I don't know. So there, you could see now you could process it from this point forward. Now I mentioned that's one of the four new features that is stitching to panorama. The fourth new feature is it creates an HDR image. And I have some images over here in the film strip of a basilica that's like five minutes from my house. Um, this I took, I didn't want the stained glass windows to be blown out. And you can see this image here that um, was properly exposed in my opinion. The stained glass windows are blown out. So I took another image that was two steps underexposed from that image and then this one I believe was four steps or something like that these are old images I took them a long time ago and you could see that the stained glass windows aren't as blown out in this shot I want to create an HDR image so again I will select them all in the film strip once they're all selected I could go back up to image and then down to merge to HDR but there is actually another way when you have them all selected over here in the film strip you could just right click right on them on the film strip and you could go then down from here, merge to HDR right here. And when you do that, it's going to ask you, do you want to auto adjust them and auto align them? I definitely want to auto align them. This was handheld. I didn't use a tripod. And I suggest even if you are using a tripod, click on auto align because sometimes there are some slight micro movements between images on a tripod. Maybe you're outside, it's a little windy. The tripod moved just a tiny bit. Maybe you just touched the shutter button things like that. So always auto align. Auto adjust, um, what it will do is it will just auto do some auto adjustments. I'll let it do that. All right, so we'll click merge. And what it will do, it will then immediately, as it created that panorama, it will create this HDR image and put it in the film strip. So it's in the same folder as the other images. Um, these images, I think were taken, uh, I mentioned they were old, they were Nikon D800E, so they are fairly large files as well, fairly, fairly large raw files. Um, now here is the HDR image, that's auto-adjusted, I don't like it at all. Um, it, this church wasn't that bright um, inside, it was kind of dark in there. So I'm going to bring exposure way down, but... Um, that's it, you know, so now I have an image that has some detail into the shadows and those stained glass windows that were up there at the top of the dome aren't blown out. So that is one reason why you may want to um, create an HDR image. And it does a nice job. It doesn't give you that grotesque HDR look that many of us have come to loathe over the years. So it does a very good job. Now that's really it, those, these four new features uh, for an entirely new um, release of Capture One. Whether or not you may want to upgrade, it may not be worth it to you uh, because, as I mentioned, um, there are only four new features and a lot of people don't stitch panoramas and don't use HDR and they don't have Canon that they'd be wirelessly, wirelessly tethering and they don't really care about batch straightening. Um, so, you know, 
it's, it's really a personal choice. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website and you could just take a look at everything that is new, including what cameras are um, supported for that wireless tethering. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.